the ability to suffer and endure reasonable hardships and indignities, in my opinion, will be bigger keys to the success of most than their ability to conceive success or even their ability to earn success. Many people have the skills and talents to get somewhere that they just don't have the constitution to actually get. And, and that is something that you can really only learn through experience and, and really only hear from people that have both proven that they can fail and proven that they can succeed. Things that happened to me when I was a kid, the first time I drank alcohol, I was beaten down by a group of strangers left outside in a city I wasn't familiar with. And a couple of years after that, I ended up working with uh, a man that killed a little girl during the same time span that I was working with him. And a pretty strong argument could be made that if I had handled that differently, the situation would have gone differently. So considering that stuff, alongside, I don't know, just the nature of trying to run a small hardcore band at the time and the nature of wanting to bring bands and put on shows that we knew were gonna lose money, we knew there was gonna be violence, we knew that the promoters were gonna try and take advantage of us, and we did it anyway. It, it, I guess that's specific unspecifics. Those are a couple of the things that, that really kind of set the tone for, for how I view things. And then as far as the business side of things, We've, we've had some successes and some failures. So you wandered into Wolf Brigade, which is our strength and conditioning facility in Rochester, New York, and also mostly what my bedroom would have looked like as a teenager. <laughs> and I'm kind of proud that they are both equally represented. We had a more conventional gym in California, CrossFit Long Beach, and it was excellent, but when I started realizing I had to come back to Rochester, I knew I wanted to do something a little more different, a little, a little more culturally in line with where I came from and, and, and what I was brought up in, which is hardcore music and, and BMX bike riding. So we, we've gotten really, really good at training people and incorporated a lot of the same sensibilities we've used my entire life and everything else I've done in order to build mindsets and perspectives as well as a physical body. So when I decided that I had to do something to help my body in order to either keep BMX bike riding or, or to continue in martial arts the way I was, I realized that strength and conditioning was the missing link. But a kid that grew up like I did, that type of environment is not appealing at all. So that's when I started realizing that what we needed to do was create something that philosophically aligned with the physicality that we needed to provide. And that's what we've done here at Wolf Brigade. So this is our office. We have liberated images here. 
the Sully's here and over there, and then you know the Bridge Nine record label over here. So I spend most of my day just bouncing back and forth between the spaces. I started the record label when I was 19 years old, and you know back then, they, banks weren't exactly giving out loans to kids that want to put out punk rock records. So I needed to figure out a way to, to make some extra money. And at the time, a friend of mine was looking to start selling stuff outside of Fenway Park to Red Sox fans. Well, I live right near Fenway Park, and there was 38,000 fans in one spot every game. So we started making initially stickers and then a few years later t-shirts just stuff that resonated with sports fans that's where Sully's grew out of initially it was just an opportunity to make a few bucks to put into the record label and then over time we realized right, we actually have something here too and it just grew into its own business So when we started selling t-shirts outside of Fenway, we used a, a local shop. And after the first year, we became their biggest account. So we realized, you know, maybe we should take this in-house and start doing it ourselves. So we started Liberated Images, which is a custom screen printing business, but it was started initially just to print t-shirts for the record label and for, for Sully's. So we print all of our t-shirts in-house here. Now we've been here for 12 years and it's, it's kind of our identity here. I, it's our office, but it's, it's also kind of, kind of a clubhouse and you know, also kind of a, a museum to you know, the, the 24 or so years we've been labeled. My name's Sonny. I'm 33 years old, living in Philadelphia. Um, I run a site called Hate Five Six. It's basically a project I've been running since 2007, 2008. But it started way before that. Probably started around 2000, 2001, when I was 14 or 15 in high school. I decided to pick up a video camera and film my friends' bands who were playing small uh, punk shows, ska shows, things like that. I started riding in 99, 98, 99. I remember seeing something on ESPN, the X Games, professional flatland riders going off. And at that point I was jumping off curbs and setting up um, ramps with friends and just doing that in the street. But I was really fascinated by flatland, just the idea of doing tricks on flat ground and manipulating momentum and manipulating your weight and the body or the, the bike's positioning. I thought that was really elegant and it was, it redefined what it meant to ride a bike. I look at Flatland very similar to how I approach 856 in the sense that I'm trying things that in my head I feel like are possible. I won't know until I try it. Growing up, I had a really deep appreciation for live recordings and finding music through that because I've always felt that music is meant to be experienced live. I, I, listening to a record is great, but seeing a show live and being in a room with other people is what makes hardcore and punk and just live music in general really click because you're next to other people that are you know, there for similar reasons and they're also being moved by that same music in the room. People don't really realize that it's just me. It's a one-man operation. Obviously, if it's a multiple camera shoot or if I have soundboard audio, I have people that are helping me with that, but pretty much everything from the filming, the editing, uh, the maintaining of the site and all social media is me. So a lot of the challenges has been just time management. Well, why is what you do valuable? It's like, well, one, people are using, use the videos to find out about new music, but I think what I'm trying to convey to people is that 
I'm building a resource here. I'm trying to build a long-standing archive, almost like a national archive or a giant library of videos. And to do that requires more than just like filming and posting on YouTube. Like I'm trying to build like something that's highly indexed and searchable and structured. It's like a media project, but it's also like a mini tech project as well that I'm running at this point. So I'm wearing multiple hats and I'm like existing in this weird space of so many different things at once. Getting ready for uh, sort of like an impromptu outdoor art show in this little bus zone, which is like my dwelling slash art studio. Fucking ridiculous. I started FBM Bike Company in 1993, and uh, since then I've traveled the world hosting and announcing contests, riding bikes, shooting photos. doing art, a character in a video game, hosted a network TV show, done a bunch of cool stuff and uh, when I'm not doing all that I kind of hang out at DIY spots and empty swimming pools and dirt jumps in the woods and uh, I live in a school bus. When we started the bike company, it was initially it was stickers and t-shirts and then we sold them, you know, to pay for gas money to go to events. And then it was like, cool, we sold those. We had some money left over, let's make some hats and like, let's make a video. So each opportunity started to show itself. There was never like a game plan. You got like teenage daydreams when you're, you know, you're a kid, you're like, oh man, it'd be awesome to do all this shit. But nobody has the wherewithal to like create an outline for their whole life. Maybe some people do, but they're probably psychos. <laughs> One of the weird things about doing the American Bike Company and American manufacturing and being proud of like the Made in the USA thing, it's got nothing to do with nationalism. You know, Made in the USA, it was like our, our version of that was like made by us. It didn't matter if we were in like Egypt or fucking Mars or, you know, the dark side of the moon or Canada or wherever. We would have done it ourselves and within our community regardless of like what country we were and we just happened to be Americans. I've spent my whole life working and like contributing to the workforce and paying taxes and creating jobs and to not be able to afford to go shopping at Whole Foods or go see a doctor or go to a hospital. It fucks with my head a lot, you know? And that was like a thing last year when I got hurt. I'm like taking inventory about who I am and where I'm at in my life. And I was like, man, I wish there was a different scenario where I could like wrap my head around this shit, you know? Talk to me about success. Like how, how do you, <laughs> I mean, I hate trailing everything back to the same inciting incidents, but success to me has always felt like simply the ability to not have to do anything philosophically that I don't feel is right or that, or that doesn't align with our mission. When you're a kid, you know how it is. You got sick of all we're millionaires, and you thought, you know, like to bitching about paying ten dollars for a t-shirt or whatever. Oh God! Hopefully, this uh, will squash any Chris Renz a millionaire rumors. 
Yeah, I mean, there's a million other things that I could be putting my time and energy into to make a much better living. So over the years, despite the negativity, there's been a lot of positive feedback about the work that I'm doing. I hear from people all over the world almost every day who are finding new music or reliving shows that they went to, whether it's someone in the military who's stuck in a Humvee. Little, like literally I heard from someone in that situation who was watching a video of his friend's band playing and that got him excited and reminded him, reminded him of home. If I'd have known anything about business, I would have never started a bike company to begin with, but... <laughs> Fucking ridiculous concept. You know, trying to make an honest living out of doing something you love, it's like a terrible idea. <laughs> in the community that I grew up in and the influences that I had growing up, success was de defined by value and values. And I think those are two completely separate things. Success is a mixed bag. It's a real be careful what you wish for situation to anyone that has a, a job that is also a mission as opposed to a job that is just a career. And I think that's where we are. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased that with what Wolf Brigade has done and, and what it's turning into, if something doesn't ring true, then we just don't participate. And to me, that's, that's, that's success. I've heard people who are like bedridden with like potentially life-threatening illnesses who are relying on the videos to take them away from that hospital room and be in an environment that reminds them of like better times. So once I started hearing that kind of feedback, it made me realize that what I'm doing, it's important work and it's something that's helping a lot of people. This will look cool when it's done though. Grown ass man living in a school bus painting shitty Garfield on a fucking like dirt yard. <laughs> Makes sense. Everything I daydreamed about as a kid. <laughs> when I was in high school and I was probably should have been paying attention to like, you know, whatever class I was in and I'm looking at Freestyling Magazine or BMX Action or whatever, it had all these like hopes and dreams and ideas of what life could be like as a BMXer. Now I'm 45 years old and I'm all but broke and I, I live in a school bus and I ride kids bikes and if you put it in, in a different context that sounds outrageous and it can be like a little unnerving I'm like Jesus Christ but it's like really it's like be careful what you wish for because sometimes you'll get it and this is exactly what I wanted it's just not how I imagined it would be you know but I don't have a problem with it you know it's like I have the freedom to do what I want like you know within reason you know it's like you know, what I don't have the money for, I figure out ways to, you know, make it happen. You know, I've tailored my life to need less money so that I can have more time and freedom to do the cool shit that I want to do, you know. Money has never been the driving factor. It's more of just like continuing to create and just being able to do it. I mean, you know, it's the record label started when I was 19, you know, and I'm it's in its 24th year, you know, I'm 43 now. So just being able to continue to, to work with new bands, I mean, that's, for me, that's the definition of success. In the last year, I've become much happier with what I'm doing. And for me, that's what, that's all that success is. If what I'm doing now is what I'm doing with the rest, with the rest of my life, I'm, I would call that a success. I don't know what success is in traditional terms, but for me, I think it's about like feeling good about what you're doing and what you're a part of and like, having purpose and doing something meaningful with your time. And uh, 
I feel like a modest success in, in the way I've lived my life so far. My, my definition of success isn't strange. I think it's only unconventional because the conventional definition of success has traveled so far from where it was even 50, 60, 70 years ago.